Hey Josh, what about something for somebody who has four kids and I need four separate beds? Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bishop's RV in Coldwater, Michigan today with a Freedom Express 29 SE. And this is an RV that has become rarely hard to find, something that actually has a fourth separate individual bed space. Uh, what's really cool about this one, it also answers the question, like sometimes you might look at a stick and tin uh, private bunk camper and say, man, I like that layout, but don't you have anything like that laminated with aluminum framing or Asdell? And that's where this one comes in right here. It's kind of teetering on the edge of what you may or may not consider half-ton towable. We'll expand on that later in the video. What I like about this one, though, is how it gives you all those signature calling card Freedom Express features, but without all the fluff stuff that adds a bunch of weight and cost to it that maybe if you're looking for a camping experience and not a glamping experience, I think you're going to like what they offer here. It is carpetless, even in the slide, ventless flooring, super easy cleaning, excellent if you camp at uh, like sandy places, and especially in a bunk model with a bunch of kids coming and going, that can be really really awesome and again totally separate front and rear private sleeping spaces with a true queen bed up front and a taller ceiling so if you're a little bit bigger than the average bear like me this is a, uh, a family camper that won't necessarily completely break the bank like a lot of things do that you can actually fit into without it being like 9,000 pounds. Well, it's 9,000 pounds gross weight, so it's kind of funny that I mentioned that number. Regardless, um, uh, we are double Asdale walls. It has factory tire pressure monitoring, which is kind of a crazy, shocking, surprising find. We're looking at one today with the 12 volt fridge, but a two ways available if you're looking for a little more uh, power friendly boondock kind of camping situation here and a bunch of other good qualities. It's also got a couple hiccups like uh, accessing the roof. Well, <laughs> That's gonna be a little bit of a trick, but we're gonna share some of those good and not so good qualities with you in this video as we go. And if you like that kind of fair approach, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. See what she does have to offer you and your family. So this layout is definitely not exclusive in the RV industry. This is a model that's been uh, just killing it since way before I was even in this business, nearly 14 years ago now. But they've executed it in some key areas, like the fact that that whole super slide that floor flush slide there is carpetless. Now, you might notice how the carpet, or the, well, not the carpet, but the carpetless flap is levitating a little bit. That's because it's about 30 degrees out currently, and the stuff needs to relax. In the summertime, that'll fold down a little more flush. They also have no floor heating vents in these, so it's just very easy to keep clean. Now, the ceiling of this is extra tall versus a lot of things. It's got a six foot nine wall height. So it's a linear interior. It's a vaulted exterior roof, but it's six foot nine all the way across inside. And it's the height of the sidewalls that determines things like how tall can the slides be? How much room is really in those bunks? How much headroom do you really have? Although a vaulted ceiling camper can kind of cheat the difference and give you a decent headroom in the shower. That is something that I do enjoy in quite a few models. Over here, we're looking at that bigger, faster cooling, travel safe 12 volt DC compressor fridge. And today we're looking at a 12 volt fridge and no solar. The RV has options for a two-way fridge with or without solar. You can get solar with the 12 volt fridge. You can do all those fun little different things. So the way that we're looking at it today, definitely best suited for something like Midwestern park camping. You know, when you're towing, uh, the, the vehicle will help keep the battery charged uh, through the, the seven-way pigtail on your, uh, your vehicle there. And uh, at your destination, the park will keep the fridge running. But if you want to go untethered off-grid, you're going to need to do some changes versus what we're seeing here today. Thankfully, not like David Bowie level ch ch, -ch changes but more like Charles Bradley. Wait, No! Charles Bradley covered that song, didn't he? I'm going through change. Wasn't that a Black Sabbath song? Are we hitting on some Ozzy Osbourne reference territory here? Uh, somebody told me way back in school that uh, I reminded them of their favorite Ozzy Osbourne quote, and that was, of all the things I've lost, I, I miss my mind the most. And boy, I've never felt so seen. <laughs> now, right here, we got a classic camping feature. We got a family camper. We got a tub, and there's a lot of people who are like, nope, don't like tubs, and there's a lot of people who keep going, why don't more manufacturers give tubs for little kids? It's a great feature. Well, different brands do it in different ways, and here, you got to see that they do a tub. Now, a lot of people want to ask, well, can they add to this and subtract from that? And no, no. 
RV manufacturing is not like housing where you can make changes. It's a cookie cutter, and sometimes you can add a little bit of sprinkles, like a solar package, but you can't change the cookie. Now, this right here, this bottom left bunk, that is really, I think, one of the major calling card benefit points of this floor plan because, you know, there's plenty of triple bunks and an outside kitchen out there. A true four quad bunk, a classic quad bunk, frankly, is something that has become weirdly, weirdly hard to find. Notice how every single window opens for airflow and uh, you, you can flat black hole sun the, uh, the, the windows on these with those blackout kind of snap-on shades right there. But that, I think, is a stroke of genius because, one, they're inexpensive, but, two, they don't stick out. So if kids roll around and thrash around at night like they do, it doesn't tend to tear everything up. Now, you do have heat vents back here. You do have air vents back here, so keep that stuff in mind. You may also notice you do have some entertainment hookups back here, depending on what kind of camping trip. If you want to make it a light glamping trip, you could do that. I'd be curious. I love the storage back here, but what if instead of that, it had a cargo door? You'd lose the outside pass-through, but you'd gain some inside cargo space. Let me know what you think about that. Meanwhile... Let's take a look at said storage and see what kind of space it does have to offer. That is a big chunk of dresser space because kids need a lot of space. I don't know about you, like, my wife and I, we lived in this small little charming starter home and we were getting along just fine. Then we had our daughter and she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. But she occupies two thirds of our home despite living with two adults. It's baffling to me how much space uh, kids take up now. Multiply that by four, and that storage back there in the bunk room, it's going to be a nice start. It ain't going to be the final countdown by any uh, stretch of the imagination. And buddy, I am on the musical reference kick today. Anyway, um, the air conditioner, I did mention, it is centralized. You have the option of uh, outfitting with the bigger 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And uh, you see the TV package there. Now, obviously, by default, looking at this thing, this is not a direct-facing entertainment center. That is a bit of a neck-wrecker entertainment center right there. I kind of look at that entertainment center like, okay, this is emergency rainy day survival. Or like if you got everybody piled up around the dinette, most, some of the people, would be able to see the TV from the dinette, the way that it pivots out there. Now, the Big Brother Fancy Pants Shiny Shoes Freedom Express 292 Liberty Edition that will have all the Jazzy Pants upgrades, like the uh, electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down below there. And that really cool vaulted bed storage system that the SE series here does not include. I do love that big shoe garage. I also want to draw attention to something that they do over here that is easily, easily missed. They have good countertop space in this. It's just not as obvious as you might think, and it's maybe not the most functional for prep space, but appliances and stuff. Notice how deep it is behind the stovetop and behind the sink right there. That's because these are extra deep countertops, and if you're curious about power outlets, those are all located uh, up here under the overhead cabinetry. Why? Because it's an inch and a half sidewall, and trying to run uh, wiring into an inch and a half laminated wall is about a nightmare, and it's hard to make up to code. If you're ever curious, by the way, here's a shopping pro tip. You see how the door jam sticks out of the sidewall about a half inch? That's because those door jams are standardized to two inches deep. So you can tell right there by looking at the door wh without any salesperson ever telling you if the walls are inch and a half or two inches deep. And frankly, one of the best shopping tips I think I can ever give you is to ask a question of a salesperson that, uh, that, that you already know the answer to. And, I, and I'm not saying be super stupid and obscure, but something generally straightforward, easy to find out, and harmless like that. Because you're going to find either the person knows, or they guessed lucky, uh, or they're willing to lie to you and make stuff up. And if they're willing to lie to you about the sidewall thickness, they're willing to lie to you about a whole bunch else. Now, it's easy to miss because it's dark on dark, but you do have household and USB plugs on both sides of this. And this is a true queen bed. I like to point that out because if you look at this, it's kind of a classic island entertainment design where the bed comes right up to the sliding pocket privacy doors right there. Well, if that was not a, uh, a true queen bed, you would not be able to upgrade it. Thankfully, you don't have to. Now, looking down below the bed here, it does still have under bed storage. It just doesn't have that vaulted bed lift system like the, uh, the, the more 
upfitted, basically, the higher trim package, more expensive Freedom Expresses have that vaulted storage system. And I think we about covered it. Let's check her out in road mode, yeehaw. But travel access is truly this one's Achilles heel right here. Now, it's not that it's completely awful for travel or anything like that. It just, you lose some potentially important things for folks. Now, if you need to get in here, you need to get to the fridge, you need to get to the sink or the cabinetry, you can stop and have a little snack-tastic travel stay over. Although, I do recommend not occupying the slide while you're at a travel stop because the inside edge of that slide's not supported. Extra little detail there for you. Notice how I've got the table down for transit so it doesn't smash all over the place. But it kind of becomes a hiccup when it comes to uh, are we able or not able to access the bathroom. And really, the answer there is going to depend on what you do. By default, if the door to the bathroom is closed and then you close the slide, there's not enough room to open the bathroom door to get to the slide. But if you look, there is just enough room between the foot of that uh, slide out and the bathroom wall where if you leave the bathroom door open and somehow secure it properly, which the manufacturer doesn't have allowances for, they're not planning on you doing that, you're going to have to plan for that, then you might be able to do the Luke Knee Walker gently across that dinette and get yourself into the bathroom for a travel stop. But the rear bunk, unless you got a tiny lightweight kid and you're going to help him kind of, you're going to lift him out there, you're probably not going to get to the bunks in transit. That's just kind of one of the catch-22s of this model. But I don't want to just conveniently overlook that and not talk about it. I'm going to share the good with the bad as we go. So when we start talking towing, speaking of road mode, what's it going to take to move this beauty along? Well, this one teeters, like I said, on the edge of what I, I think will generally be considered uh, half-ton towable or not half-ton towable. And here's what I mean. The empty dry weight of the RV itself is about 6,000 pounds. The maximum weight with full cargo is about 9,000, which means this thing actually has some serious cargo capacity. And it's kind of been my experience that RVs with more cargo capacity have structures that are less stressed and they tend to stay out of the shop. Now that's not necessarily a guarantee of anything, by the way. It's just, it's a trend that I've noticed, anyway. Uh, power tongue jack, doing the heavy lifting for us. You got the little plug buddy holder on the front to keep your seven-way pigtail from laying in the dirt and the muck and getting fouled out and rusted out and corroded over time. I guess those are all kind of synonymous words with one another. It's just like the time in London and England. Anyway, spare tire they mount under the tongue. A lot of your Coachman laminated brands do that. Uh, for load equalization purposes, it also means the rear bumper's wide open if you want to add accessories that... The Coachman Muckety Muck Bean Counters uh, will also tell you not to do. So keep that in mind. Uh, do so at your own risk. The underbelly is still forced air heated and enclosed, which is a really nice find. And something else they do on this one, they opted to go with the Sir Mix-a-Lot Double Up outside storage space because this is one of uh, two full pass-through compartments. And we'll see that other one in just a few minutes here. Notice, though, you have big baggage doors on both sides of the front pass-through. The rear pass-through is smaller, but again, they use symmetrically sized doors left to right, which is a nice find. Uh, I mentioned previously, but this is an Asdell using model, and frankly, Coachman's been doing Asdell way before it was cool. Um, and as of last year, in the 22 season, they actually shifted to use uh, what I call double Asdell. So previously, they used Asdell layering only under the fiberglass, the interior wall board in the lamb witch as it were was still uh luon well now they're using asdell inside and out basically which is kind of cool up front here we have a combination uh drunken uncle bottle opener and tie down situation so you can both tie one on and then tie one on to the hold back it's a uh crafty little use of verbiage there that i'll probably never manage to spit out of my mouth on the fly uh successfully again now, the awning on this isn't bad, but this is one of those areas where you can see it's a member of their select series. They didn't go quite as big, and part of the reason is this is the offshoot of the Big Brother 292. The 292 has a full-size big camp kitchen back here where the door swings up and kind of acts like extra coverage. Well, that uh, they, they just stuck with basically the standard build on that, and they did not extend the awning, especially considering this is their more price-sensitive segment. When you weave your way around the back here, it does feel a little bit smaller. Now, if you're looking down below the rear bumper, you might notice a couple little brackets hanging down. They, remember how I said the corporate muckety-muck bean counters don't want you to put things like a bike rack on the bumper? 
Well, they have basically prepped it now so you could bolt on a, uh, a cargo receiver hitch on the back. So if you wanted to add things like a bike rack without screwing up your structural coverage, that is something you can do now, which is very cool. Now, you might notice they don't specifically add like the little breps for uh, breps. What? Uh, brackets, preps. Uh, yeah, that's breps is bracketed preps. Apparently, I'm that's a new nerdism that I wish I never created. You get the idea. They don't overtly prep their slide is uh slide outs oh my gosh i can't talk they don't prep their slides for slide awnings if you just look at it but the fact is you can totally install slide awnings on this but the thing is remember manufacturers don't cover work that they don't do that's kind of just a recurring trend and that's true not just of freedom express that's true of almost any brand now if you notice over on the left that's where you have like some water inlet hookups but since this doesn't have a camp kitchen this is actually their classic build it features a full second pass through back here and basically that's all under the dresser uh that we saw on the inside now over here where there would have uh or on the other version been a camp kitchen it's just a big chunk of storage space well you might have noticed no ladder on the back here this has the same freedom express fully walkable roof apparently they just aren't factory standard for a ladder anymore so i know the next question is can a ladder be added to it i know that'd be the next question i would ask because that is the next question that i asked i made sure i called the factory to verify and just like last year they are still putting a uh, ladder mount prep basically the support and the structure in the rear wall where if you did want to add a roof ladder to it that's definitely something that we could assist uh for you it's just on the se series again they're being a little more budget focused that's not a standard feature and fixture on those uh the next question then okay what about we're talking about roof stuff what about solar stuff just like the big brothers this is roof solar prepped and there is a factory solar option it's about 200 watts 30 amp controller it might be 175 watts now yeah that sounds about right sorry I see a lot of RVs and that stuff gets blurry real, real fast. But you can add a ladder to it. You can add solar to it. Just by default, it doesn't have either of those things. Now, if that's a question you were going to ask and we answered that for you, leave me a little note that says, thanks, nerd. Like our video. All those fun, stupid YouTube things that I have to say. Now, like I said, when we began, there is a big brother version of this called the 292 Freedom Express in their Liberty Edition. Now, that will be a triple bunk, not a quad, but it, it's, uh, it, it actually has a full outside camp kitchen, a big camp kitchen with a real sink and everything that has also become very rare and very hard to find. So either way, they're kind of doing things that a lot of brands aren't doing anymore. Um, on the on your big brothers, you will find things like the roof ladders and whatnot. Again, I, am, I, I will say, if, if I could change one thing on this RV, It'd be getting that ladder on this thing. But that's my two cents. What do you like about this one? What, what do you dislike? Like, what is your one thing that you would change to make this better? And what is that one thing that you're like, wow, I'm really impressed they did that? I'd love to hear from you. When you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.